All right, so we've looked at the operation of the DC to DC. Now let's take a look at some of the, uh, the common fault finding. Now, obviously fault finding is endless um, and we can't cover all scenarios. So let's just take a look at some of the basic ones. Now, first off, the unit's off here. Um, my vehicle's off there at the moment, so I don't actually have vehicle input there, but you may come to your, um, your caravan, for example, it may be plugged into your tow vehicle or in the back and it's still not lit up, um, but you know the vehicle's running. What can that be? Um, now, first off, one of the key um, things to check is just pressing and um, holding that menu button there until the screen lights up. Now what it will do is it will go through its startup period, it will go through the voltages. So we saw the first one was the actual battery voltage of your auxiliary battery, it was good. It then did go through solar, there was zero volts. Also went through to your um, channel three and put your vehicle, it was also zero volts. But again we can press now and we can go through there and we can see there is no voltage on the solar and there's no voltage on your car. So what are we looking at there? We're looking at maybe the fuse is blown um, or the circuit breaker's tripped or a connection's actually come unplugged. Um, or as I'm doing at the moment, my car's actually not running, therefore my ignition relay's not on. But a key one there, so if the unit's not lighting up, press and hold that menu button, allow it to start up, and then you can cycle through the voltages to make sure you actually do have a correct voltage to the DC to DC. Now, another common one there as well, is the unit's not outputting as expected. The first and probably the most common one of that is people going, oh, well, hang on a second, I've got my H40 setting at 40 amps, but it's only putting out 20 amps or five amps maybe. Why is that? It can be as simple as your battery is 100% full. Um, so obviously right at the end of the charging cycle, the DC to DC will start ramping off and to the final stage, it will actually stop outputting um, or just cover any loads. So again, that's a very common tech call that we get is, it's actually only outputting five amps, but I've got H40, um, H setting set to 40. Again, battery could be full. What else can it be? Now the DC to DCs um, do rate based on the voltage input there as well. So if you've got a poor connection um, on your vehicle wiring, maybe your Anderson plugs come a little bit loose um, between your car and your caravan, for example, if that voltage is down below 11.5 volts, it will derate. Um, now another key topic on that one talking about derating is if you're using one of our DC to DC 24 volt 30 amp uh, DC chargers is if you're using those on a 12 volt input for example charging a 24 volt auxiliary bank um, they do derate their output so keep that one in mind there as well um, so that's if it's not outputting one check for the voltages again there on your screen um, maybe pop out your multimeter, check what you've got at your actual starter battery compared to what you've got at your um, vehicle input connections uh, on your DC to DC there, making sure you're not getting any voltage drop there throughout the system as well. We spoke just before about pressing that menu button and holding it and the screen should light up. What happens if that screen doesn't light up? What that most likely is, is the DC to DC isn't seeing any voltage, um, so no battery voltage on the actual output of the DC to DC. Now, bearing in mind that output of the DC to DC is connected to your auxiliary battery. So what can some of the causes be there? Um, it may be your auxiliary battery is completely flat and therefore doesn't have enough power to turn on your DC to DC. Um, if it's a lithium, like a BTEC, for example, again, it may be completely flat uh, and the BMS is turned off. So you need to restart your, um, your BTEC battery so it can be either a flat battery, um, it can be because your BMS is tripped out uh, on a lithium battery, or it can also be that maybe your fuse that's between your DC to DC and your auxiliary battery has blown for some reason, maybe a short in the cable, or the circuit breaker's tripped. Um, again, when we're just talking about fuses and circuit breakers, hear it a lot on the tech calls, is that it, unit's not operating at maximum performance or it's not charging or the screen's not turning on and it's those auto reset breakers. So as you can tell, we definitely do not like the auto reset breakers being installed on any of our charging systems, um, but especially the DC to DC systems. Now, some other fault finding side. This time we'll talk about our um, solar side of things. So again, I've got the genuine Red Anderson plug here. Nice, easy, simple to connect. Um, what could be the issues here? Issue could be reverse polarity uh, on your plug here, be it another connection along the lines to your solar panel. Um, could be reverse polarity there as well. Um, can be that your solar panels completely failed. Again, even if there is some voltage output um, from your solar, it will still come up, but it will just stay flashing and not actually engaged. So that could be if you've got a large amount of um, shade that's gone over your panels, it will 
drop off and will actually start flashing and not engage um, because the output of the panels have dropped there. Um, another basic one as well, if again you're pretty comfortable all that's working, it could be because you've entered into priority mode for example, um, and the way you can see that is that channel two, your solar, will be flashing, but channel three will be solid and engaged. Um, so again, you can just simply make sure your car is off or that you're not in priority mode, um, and then it should kick back over to solar, and again, channel two become the solid one. Um, another basic one as well, just try a quick reset to the unit. There's a couple of resets you can do out in the field. Um, the quickest and most basic one is, with your solar disconnected, try turning on your vehicle um, and giving it enough time to, again, sense solidly lock onto channel uh, three and make sure it's charging from the vehicle. Turn your vehicle off again, give it some time and see if it starts charging from your solar. Um, another one out in the field and all that, um, if you're feeling competent to do it, um, is you can actually disconnect um, the output of it. So the one that's going to your auxiliary battery, once you have actually disconnected it, pulled the fuse out, um, disconnected it from your auxiliary battery, you can just press and hold the menu button just to make sure the screen doesn't come on. Um, the unit itself will store a small amount of um, power energy in there, um, but it takes a little bit to discharge. So with the fuse pulled, um, just press and hold that menu button, make sure the screen doesn't light up, put the fuse um, back in or turn the circuit breaker on and that will reset the unit as well the settings on the unit will actually still be stored. So there won't be a need to go through and reset all the settings though. All right, so that wraps up our video on DC to DCs, covering all about the application, the specifications, the installation, the operation, as well as fault finding. So again, with all our Enerdrive products, they're backed by a five year warranty and also a lifetime Australian support network as well. So if you've got any questions and all that, another key thing to use is our website. It's full of information whether it be electronic product manuals uh, under the products pages, as well as information and links to our YouTube channels as well with videos such as this, um, as well as other tech tips as well. Wealth of information on our website. Jump on, take a look, www.enerdrive.com.au.